We'll turn that off for copyright strike. So what's up guys? As always, my name is David. This is the Brothers Workshop. In today's video, we're gonna actually be replacing the head unit in this 2015 Chevy Silverado. We're gonna pull this center part off. We're gonna show you guys how we do that. We're gonna show you how we pull the old radio out, put the new radio in. All right, Dave, what's the first thing we're gonna do here? We're actually gonna open the hood. Thank you. And we're going to make sure that we undo the battery. Good if you didn't have little go. sausage fingers. There sausage fingers, okay. Now we're gonna make sure we have all the extra juice drained out. In these trucks, if you hold down the unlock, the windows will go down, and they uh, definitely did not. So we definitely are not hooked up to any more. And it looks like- All the juice is out? It looks like all the juice is out, we're drained. I got the treasure. We got our instructions. Cool. Let's see what. Oh my. Dang, that's a pretty snazzy looking head unit. That's awesome. So in the box, we did an unboxing before, so we're gonna actually come up with a couple of separate videos just for this stuff, and we're gonna pair some of that in this as well. But this is the head unit, and a U car is the company that sent this out to us to check it out, see if we liked it, and give you guys a review and some feedback about this. And we're gonna pair in actual install and everything like that, so you guys get a good sense of how this works. But this is the head unit, it's 14 inch. It's to replicate a Tesla. This is a T-style head unit based on their model number. And as you can see, it starts to pair in some of the trim elements that's known for these trucks. So it's not something super generic. It, they do start to tie some stuff in here. On the flanking sides of the screen where you would have your cooling or heated seats, they do have those buttons for you. Now my truck didn't have that initially, but they included this for those people that do and so it'll look like i have that but at least it looks like oem and it's not super generic looking or it's that piece of plastic that can just get punched out and included in the kit we have our wiring all of our audio and our gps and everything like that is all in here now this is like i said the user manual but this is your install instructions it's actually super simple it's supposed to be plug and play so we're going to start removing the trim inside the truck the bezel around the radio and we're going to do that with a kit of actual trim pulling equipment or trim pulling tools and we want to make sure that we're doing that with these so that we don't damage any of that trim or that bezel because who wants to look at something that's been jammed up and back in the day when i had that chevy cobalt maybe i would have done that with a screwdriver but this you is a definitely nice truck did that with a screwdriver. i definitely did it with a screwdriver I mean, don't let him fool you yeah well it might look like junk it did, did not look great after a while grimace grimace Purple but cobalt. we're gonna go ahead we're gonna get this opened up I'm gonna link these in the description for you guys so you can get a pair or a set of this that is actually gonna help you out so you don't damage your truck either. If you guys haven't seen the video I did about repairing the seat back, I'll link that at the end of this video so you guys can see just the shenanigans that the dealer I bought this truck off of. It was used, but they pulled some shenanigans about certain things. I'm already starting to see tape back here. Which would make sense because this radio had some issues. Here we go. There we go. Okay. I can see it and I can push the tab down. There we go. Some total shenanigans. These are for the heated seats that don't exist. Maybe we can figure out how to get those put in here. They do have that right there. But well, that's that bezel. And then we have a handful of screws that we're gonna have to pull out to be able to pull the radio out. And then we'll... Okay, at first glance, you're gonna have a screw right here. You have one on this side, one at the bottom, on each side, so four total. We're using a drill but we're powered all the way down so we don't destroy anything. This is a 9 30 seconds inch socket. Seems like it'll fit. I'm sure there's a metric one, but we don't have metric for this. So let's give it a shot. How's that working? Pretty good. There we go. Yeah. So 
If you have a 9 32 inch socket, it'll work out just fine. Make sure you don't overpower the drill because you don't want it to strip anything. Now that you have the screws out, all you're gonna do is just pop that side and pop that side and it'll come right out. And on the back side here, as you can see, we only have three wires. Basically a blue wire that's coming in here. We have, it looks like four, five wires that come into this side here. And then we have a lower control wire for our HVAC. We realized that we forgot to take out the Fall Out Boy CD that was in here. Save Rock and Roll. It's, oh, good, no. it's a good album, but it's a burn CD, so I don't really care. And we're gonna head, go ahead and leave it in here because the actual CD player itself does not come out. It stays in, and it's gonna be a cool little time capsule for whoever comes back here at some point and replaces it. They'll find this old Fall Out Boy CD in here and be like, who the heck was driving this truck? Somebody in the good tunes, boy. <laughs> There's just little tabs that you have to push down and it releases pretty easily. You guys can see this one right there. Push in and releases. That's the top of the tab that you press down. I'm gonna throw this in the woods. It'll make a pretty nice Frisbee. So on the tailgate we have a huge mess. Yeah. Don't you love wiring? No, I don't. I'm rewiring to 66 right now. It's yeah. terrible. We'll link that video at the end because it's a it's an interesting hassle. This is a little simpler because it's all centrally plug and play, but we have to decipher what's what and where it goes. But this is our wiring harness. This is what's taking all the information from the truck's computer and putting it into our new head right. unit. Hey Dave, there's a creepy guy who likes Fords coming up. Oh no, not that guy. Oh no, what's he doing? Give him some crap when you see him. Yeah, nobody um, around here likes Fords. So this is our wiring harness, right? So this is our SIM card port in here. You still like Fords? Yeah, buddy. So yeah. basically this is just a big tablet. We have our tech guy here who may want to pop in and say something if he understands it. Who Probably knows? Not. Yeah, he likes Fords. He might be able to program that little aluminum pop can he's got, but. <laughs> there are also some cellular uh, cables too that actually can give you 4G if you want it. We don't need that. We want this to actually just act as a head unit. So we're going to forgo this because it is a SIM card reader. Um, and the tablet or the head unit itself is actually from what the manufacturer is telling us a Android tablet. So there's almost no difference. It's just like a giant cell phone in a way. Okay, this is our USB plug jack. It's allowing us to connect into the tablet via USB. We have an aux cord adapter. This is our speaker cable, our, our plug adapter for our speaker cable. This is your rear view camera. So if you have an auxiliary rear view camera, you can go ahead and hook this up with this, or maybe even front facing camera. This is our microphone. Uh, this is our GPS receiver. And then we have our cellular service receivers here, which we're gonna go ahead and for go at least for now maybe we'll add them later but and then this is a speaker but I'm not sure why there's a speaker because we have speakers all over the truck and there's nothing that says what this actually is for and I'm just gonna go ahead and not put it on I don't Mike why would they give me another speaker unless that's necessary for uh... Wow. Dave is going to be driving a Tesla. Yo, what song we're going to put on first? With the Tesla? Spin is looking kind of extra. And this is our steering wheel control adapter. I think this is the only piece that we're going to have to actually get up underneath the dashboard to install and we just click this into place. They have an instruction for that. Uh, and then this is our final piece, our canvas box. What's a canvas box? I have no clue. I'm going to Google that. I have really no clue what this is. The only thing I could think of is maybe it's some kind of a control module either for the system uh, in regulating what's going in and out of it. So now we're going to start wiring it all up. This is our GPS. It's the first piece of the equation. Click that in right there. That's simple. Just later on we're going to have to find a place for that to sit underneath the dashboard. It comes with double-sided tape, so yeah, that's what that red stuff this is. is. This is the side that goes into your car. Everything else here is 
plugged into this system. I believe only one or two other things plug into the car. This is the auxiliary camera. Okay. We don't have an auxiliary camera. We actually have the OEM camera. So we're just gonna plug this in first to make sure that we know where that's supposed to go for right now. The other ones we know um, our cell adapters are here and here, or our cell antennas are here and here. And then there, uh, our SIM card adapter is this next one. And then we go to our auxiliary camera and then our CAN plug to the head side is right here. It's right here. CD player? Yeah, and a Fall Out Boy CD. <laughs> Sorry, it was a burn. <laughs> so I think it's all wired up now. <laughs> it sucks that there's no connection for these either, so these are just going to sit here at loose too. So it won't rattle. Because if you don't do that, it'll have loose the clips will be loose. Okay, so now this connection is a connection here. Okay, that's in. And then he's so boring. Hold on. Taking his time reading and stuff. It's almost like this is his like pride and joy. Almost like he cares about this thing. <laughs> that, like mm. that. And... Okay, I didn't want to break the pins. We're good, it's in there. Okay, so the, but they show this picture here. But they cut off the top part of what's going on in this assembly. This orange wire here is from the manufacturer of this aftermarket head unit. The male end connects into this female end that's built into the dashboard here. The female end of this wire takes the place, it takes the male end of the truck's uh, computer wire. So then this orange wire here connects all the way in to our new aftermarket head unit. So essentially the, this is a bypass. Yeah, basically what, what this is, is all this is doing is connecting the computer to the new head unit. So you said it's all hooked up? Yeah. Okay, moment of truth, truth. So the truck still works. There's Got power, the AC. Power to the AC. AC is blowing. GT6. Hmm. Okay. You definitely want to like. Oh, it lets you know your doors are ajar. Yeah. Nice. Which are all the doors that are open. That's awesome. Okay, you're gonna try to hit all the buttons, like make sure everything works. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's try the heated and cooled seats, huh? Yeah, smart guy. Oh, that doesn't that work, so dude. Nice. Oh, you like that heated seat back there. That's an eventual upgrade. Okay, let's see. Right. This is actually kind of nice. This is a better interface than I thought it was going to be. Way better. Um, let's go to music. Put some tunes on. There's what's nothing. That, what's that little widget? I don't know. It's a little guy. Get out of my oh, way. Is that Wally? No, that's Eva. It's Eva. Eva. It is Eva. Eva. Um, okay, how do you go back? So, oh, home screen, I guess, right? Car audio? It's car auto. Music. Please connect Bluetooth. Okay. Yeah, it's connected, it says. This one and that one there.
Go. I think I got it, maybe. There we go. Pull that off. To be able to get access to the underside of our steering wheel, we have to pull the tilt wheel cover off, or the tilt wheel lever, we gotta pull that off, and then we're gonna have to pull the bottom of our steering wheel cover off. This is what we're talking about here. You just pull out, and it's just a couple clips, and then you can pull the uh, cover off. That's the easiest way to do it. You're not gonna get your trim tools in there. You just pulled it from the back, right? So I everybody understands? It from the, the back down? Yeah. Because your trim tools aren't gonna fit around there. It's uh, actually a really tight seal around that. You're gonna fish this through down here. It's not just, it's in there. All right, then we're gonna take this and I'm gonna fish it up through here and connect that there. I'm gonna tuck this all, actually I would like to undo this because I would like to get all of this tucked neatly up into that space. So we're gonna do this, boom, just like that. Tuck all of that back in there. And then we'll zip tie it together later, but I wanna make sure that it works. That's a really quick startup. I'm surprised. Actually, uh, the wrench. This is the rattles. They're all loose again. Yeah, check that video that we have right, right here that I fixed it in. Oh yeah, these are all loose again. So just while you're here. That video is linked right here, guys. Check it out. These things come loose all the time. It creates such a nasty rattle too. Yeah, but for some reason I wasn't getting a rattle but you can really get a rattle from it. All right. Need some more thing? Okay, that is a little tough, but it's actually pretty easy to do once you get it in there. In this case, just like that, clips in. You gotta take these off. All right, so we're placing this all back together now. Make sure all the wires are back up out of the way. Mike, there might, this one might be a little bit, there's a gray wire that might be a little bit in the way. Watch that top wire. I think we got it. That's it. What do you think, Mike? Looks pretty solid. As you can see here, we are transitioning through all the different screens on this Apple CarPlay. It's absolutely fantastic to have this head unit now and be able to use all of the stuff we have on a daily basis that we're using from our Spotify music to our Apple Maps and have it all on the screen. No longer are we looking down at the phone. It's all on the screen for us. It's a very safe thing to have and a must upgrade for any car enthusiast. After AU Car Auto sent this unit out for us to test and install in my truck, we took it out for a 800 mile road trip and it performed fantastically. All right guys, so we're out testing out the head unit, out for a quick little drive to be able to give you guys a sense of what this is like while you're driving, what it's like in the truck, really give you a, a real sense of what it's like to have this thing installed in your truck versus the old one. As you can see, we've got a really big head unit now. We have the Apple CarPlay. It also does have Android Auto, so you actually can change the settings on this thing we'll pull up into another neighborhood we'll do a little slow cruise so we can kind of go over the features of this new head unit AU car auto sent this up to us for us to install and give you guys a review I'm liking it so far there's been a couple of things that were pretty interesting that the other head unit I had 
did not include. The benefits of a head unit like this, we have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. I don't have an Android, I do have an Apple, so we've got the Apple interface set up here. We haven't tried it with the Android, but do know that if you decide to purchase this, you will have the Android option in it as well, which can be really cool for this kind of a truck. This interface, uh, I'm so happy with because we had the old tech, the 2015 screen. It was the standard with the LT trim. So all it really had was just a Bluetooth interface and some touchscreen options. It didn't have, it didn't have CarPlay. It didn't have Android Auto. It didn't have the other necessities that you kind of want in a truck of you know 20 of the 2020s. So this has been super exciting. We could just hit this button here, go to our interface for our Apple phone. Uh, we can hit our maps. We've got that up here, full screen. We can go to our Spotify or our other music player that we use. Personally, I use Spotify, so it's right there. We can hit that button twice and it subdivides the screen and it gives you this fantastic looking interface. This is how a car should look. The OEM interface, it's okay. It's not the best, it's more like what a Tesla screen actually does look like. But I'm a super fan of the way this Apple CarPlay looks on the truck and the way it works. This is what I wanted. I was already in the market for upgrading this screen, but I thought the only option I was gonna have was to go with a company that could reset the truck computer and upgrade the existing head unit. But the existing head unit on my truck, we had a lot of flickering. So as you'd be driving, the screen would change constantly on its own accord. It was very weird and I was getting tired of it. So opting for something new like this was the best bet for us. If you guys are interested in replacing your head unit, upgrading with something that's more of the 2020s tech, feel free to check the link in the description below. There you'll find a link for this head unit. This is 14 and a half inches. It's massive. It's all along the lines of an actual Tesla screen. It does look really good in the truck. It's got the OEM features and it works out really well. The only thing I really wish it still had was the air conditioner on the turn knobs, that dual zone climate control. It actually has that down here and it's nice, but I'm always more partial to that. That's the aesthetics and the architect in me talking, but I love this truck and I love this upgrade. The CarPlay has been fantastic. If you guys like this, if you wanna get one for yourself, check the link in the description below. I hope you guys understand what we've got going on here. Try to make this the most informative for you. In that description, you'll find a link to per pick one of these up yourself. If you did wanna get one of these things, put in the promo code TWIN at checkout and it'll give you $50 off on a new hen unit from AU Car Auto. If you guys aren't already subscribed to the channel, feel free to hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell notification too because it's going to let you know when we come out with new videos just like this. And hit that like button and share it with your friends. If you've got comments, leave them in the comment section below. We're getting back to you guys down there. And like always, we'll see you all in the next video.